Hey, Cubicle Crashers. Thanks so much for joining me for this month's Q&A. Uh, as some of you may already know from following this page and seeing this come up every single month, uh, one of my favorite things to do monthly is to get your questions in um, and be able to uh, come here live and answer them personally myself. Uh, that really helps people that have um, some of the most common questions about leaving their nine to fives or starting a business based on their skills or just really any questions around around transition and change in terms of lifestyle choices and uh, leaving a traditional conventional life. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, so today's questions are really great related to actually um, how do you give up a life that is familiar and something that uh, is kind of a sure thing but not really something uh, you may want to do anymore and today's questions uh, come from Jessica and Mark who I'm going to share two big questions around finding your passion. Uh, when you feel unmotivated uh, and Jessica's question uh, of how do I leave something that feels familiar? Um, so these are sort of topics I really love talking about because as we sort of reach the crossroad of making choices in our lives, uh, sometimes we can think about, um, you know, these problems or issues we think we're having in sort of a, a way that needs some new fresh perspective. And I love always revealing some fresh perspective for everyone because it's something I probably would have needed <laughs> back in the day when I thought everything was doom and gloom and things felt impossible to pursue. Um, and that's why I really enjoy these conversations because we can discuss, uh, you know, what has worked uh, for some people uh, in the place that you've been to. You know, a lot of the advice that I give is really not about um, this, do exactly what I do or do exactly what I think uh, I've been helping other people to do, but really to recognize some of the aspects of um, new ideas or new ways of thinking about something that can help you with your particular scenario. Um, so whoever is here watching the Q&A as well or participating on, in the replay, um, your thoughts really matter as well. This is a community of people that um, are, we encourage to share your journey, to share your own learnings within this so that we all don't feel alone in this pursuit uh, of something different in our lives and knowing that uh, we have access, right, to people that don't feel that we're crazy <laughs> for trying to do something different. Um, so if you're listening, if you're watching the replay later on uh, and you have some familiarity uh, in doing something similar that uh, you can also give your two cents on or share, you know, your journey that's been going on so far uh, is always so appreciated. And I thank you so much for contributing and collaborating in this community. All right, so let's kick it off with the first question of the day that comes from uh, Jessica. I'm just gonna read out the question that Jessica emailed in. Uh, so Jessica says, um, how do I give up, uh, how do I give up what's familiar to pursue a different life? I'm a health practitioner with over 10 years of experience in my field, but I'm so exhausted with the hours and inflexibility. Even though I wanna start something on my, on my own to be able to quit, I can't help but think that I'm giving up something I know well and leaving my comfort zone feels hard. Please help me. <laughs> so Jessica, I think um, you're not alone in, in feeling at times um, that there's this risk of giving up uh, a career that we've worked so hard to climb the corporate ladder for, um, all the hours and experience that we've gathered, right? For you, it's been a decade's worth of experience in the health practitioner industry. Um, and it can feel really scary to give up something familiar, something that you do know how to do, something that you very likely graduated with your degree with, and you've, you know, gone after uh, what you're supposed to do, right? In the trajectory of what your other peers and colleagues were doing. And all of a sudden, 10 years later, you might feel that, I don't want to do this anymore, or I don't want to do this in this capacity anymore. Um, and at that crossroad, I think many of, uh, of, of you guys that are listening or people that have been going through this question in their own life as well, um, it, it's, it's hard to imagine at times uh, what life could be like and what your work life could be like uh, if you were no longer going to walk in the hospital uh, work in the hospital that you used to work in or the doctor's office that you used to working work in as a health practitioner uh, but I want to challenge you on a few questions today that can make you feel that potentially experimenting right with not giving up all the things that you've actually gained so much experience in can be possible and that you don't have to throw your degree or throw your uh, career experience down the toilet to pursue something different. Now I work with a lot of um, 
clients that are nurses, doctors, people in the health industry. Uh, that, and I know how hard it is to maintain the hours and have a family. Uh, you know, nurses are sometimes the, the lowest paying um, people in the industry. And I find that it's uh, appalling, right, for what they do. Uh, and it, it can be quite inflexible hours, right, to uh, I have a friend that's a nurse that has two children, um, it's really hard to have these sort of different hours all the time. And flexibility is something that I think uh, nurses, just like you, Jessica, uh, are looking for. They still want to do great work, uh, but they can't do it in the capacity uh, that they've been allowed, right, in their career. Um, and I think, Jessica, for you, the question is, you know, a, do you want to remain in the health practitioner industry? It doesn't have to be uh, in hospitals or wherever you work. I didn't get that detail from your email. But wherever you are currently working in, uh, if that's not offering you the lifestyle choices and is potentially in alignment with things that you feel important to your career, um, know that potentially you still may want to keep right some of these expertise and strengths and skills that you've already accumulated in over a decade's worth of experience. But how could you actually look at ways that you can deploy your skills in a different focus? Um, I work with nurses and health practitioners all the time. And a, a lot of times, potentially for you too, Jessica, is that you did fall in love with this career in the beginning of time. There's something that drew, drew you uh, to this career that potentially still exists within you. You're passionate about helping people with their health. You're passionate about um, supporting people in goals around their health. And that's why you became a nurse, right? Or became a health practitioner. And somewhere along the way, as you worked in the field that you were working in, um, it's sort of, you, you were disillusioned, right? With what, what you wanted to do with your career. That happens a lot, whether it's bad bosses or bad hours or whatever it may be, right? Red tape that we have to go through in order to do great work. Uh, but very likely, Jessica, you might still have a passion for health. You might still have a passion for um, helping other people reach goals in their health game, right? That's gonna allow them to live fuller, richer, um, healthy lives, right? And I want you to think about, you know, what are those concepts or ideas or, um, you know, beliefs that you still hold true to yourself, right? That you may actually still want to pursue if you were to create another career for yourself or maybe start a business, right? That can encompass those very um, messages or beliefs that you still um, know is true for you, even if you may not want to practice it in the capacity you've been practicing it. And when you do that, you can uh, start to think about uh, what are the areas of health and in my industry that I wanna tackle that I still have passion for. That if it was up to me, these are the things that I would still wanna pursue, that I still want to um, help with, right? And potentially that might be a demographic of people uh, that you feel called to help with. Um, you know, in, in my latest blog posts, uh, when I did my year recap uh, in December, I featured one of my clients, Lee, who was a nurse as well, that right, like right now she's actually turning her 15 plus years of being a nurse uh, into a new industry, right, a new niche of coaching women in their mid-age uh, to live healthier lives and to actually combine nutrition, um, fitness, right, and mindset uh, for women that are in her age group that she knows a lot about, right? And having the credentials of being a nurse uh, and the motivation and the enthusiasm for um, helping women her age feel better in the bodies that they're in, right? Things happen at mid-age, sometimes menopause and, you know, all the things that um, uh, can happen with that life stage change. She's now deploying a lot of what she knows in her health practitioner background towards a new mission, right? Towards um, this focus of really helping people her age, right, to be able to live healthier, richer lives. So, Jessica, that might be something to think about, right? Where where do you want to sit in the health practitioner industry that you don't have to give up your skills for, but that might be a small group of people, right? Maybe it's people that are just like you, or maybe it's, it's people with children, right, or uh, women in your age group, right, that have particular needs that you are really familiar with, that you can actually really use your credentials, um, your experience, uh, and your professional skill set in order to deploy into a different direction. And my, my suggestion for anyone really making any career changes or starting to shift into starting a business is not to do it right from zero to 10, right? It is scary to leave a 10-year job or a 10-year career to pursue something different. So you really want to make that um, easy and safe for yourself to do so. So while you're still working a full-time job, Jessica, um, 
when you're thinking about what can I help with? What am I more enthusiastic to help with? What am I motivated to do with the skill set that I currently have is to do it while you're still working full time. So let's say as you're brainstorming, you know, what made me interested in the health industry to begin with? What can I remember that I want to actually pursue if I was independent, you know, and some ideas spark for you, just like it did for Lee that I featured on the blog. Um, you might test it out by actually, right, looking at women in your life or people that you want to help and actually going out there and helping them before you take time and money to start a website or, you know, give up your job. Actually look at, build yourself almost like a little mini testing internship, you know, to really see if there are ways to harness these and cultivate some of these uh, dormant passions or interests that you weren't really allowed to do in your current um, company or wherever you work and go out there and look for clients, right? Look for some people in your community that you start helping, uh, uh, you know, health problems uh, around or even starting to write about it or starting to teach what you know for free will give you this sort of testing ground of, what, of, of knowing whether or not you have interest, right? That you want to continue in the health industry, but deploying those skills in, in a different way. And a lot of times we put that pressure upon ourselves that we have to start this business, start the side hustle in this very professional and polished way, right? But actually all it is that you're trying to really figure out at this point in your experiment right now, Jessica, is just, do I have other things that I want to share? Am I good at the things that I want to do? And how can I test out some of my knowledge that I've accumulated in the past decade, right? In, in the health practitioner industry to be utilized to solve different problems, to help different people. And it was up to me, how would I want to do it? So that's what I would um, suggest for you, Jessica, to so start with that. Don't give up your job. Don't Put that self-imposed pressure, right, that you, you think you have to give yourself right now to give up what's familiar, but actually to, to expand, right, add this testing side hustle in your life to experiment and give yourself that mini internship so that you're not giving up what's familiar in you, but you're actually um, leveraging your body of work to build something new that you actually really want to pursue. That feels a lot less scary, a lot less pressuring, and it also feels good to know that you're not giving up all the years that you've already accumulated in your skill set, but you're just deploying it in a different direction. Now, if you've been someone that has been uh, experiencing what Jessica had asked about, right, giving up something familiar, I want to know. You can uh, share with us in the comments of what have you done to really feel safe to maybe leave a 10-year career or even entertain the idea that there's something beyond how you've been doing something in your industry um, from before. What have you been doing? What have you had to um, question yourself on in order to feel good to experiment with what's next in your career when something isn't working in your current career? Thanks very much for that question, Jessica. That's a really good one. and something I think uh, a lot of people experience uh, in, the, uh, in the stage of transition. Uh, the second question comes from Mark. Uh, Mark asks, let me just pull up his question here. Uh, Mark says, I want to find something I'm passionate to do for a business, uh, but I feel stuck because I can feel unmotivated and nothing seems to spark. How do I find something that I'm passionate about to put focus and time on? Um, it's a funny thing about the question about passion. You know, um, I sort of have different answers sometimes depending on how I'm asked this question in, in you know, interviews and, and other videos that I've done around this idea of passion. Uh, but one of the things that I've been uh, really asking people uh, about, right, when they talk about I don't have passion, I don't feel like I have a passion, uh, or I haven't felt passionate for such a long time. And, you know, passion is one of those things that uh, isn't a thing that you do this form formula and then you will get there, right? Passion is a feeling, it's an emotion, uh, it's an energy, right, that happens in your life when you are around things that you feel passionate about, right? So uh, when we think about how do we find that passionate business idea, how do we find a passionate career or work that I should pursue, and if you're not feeling passion in any capacity in your life, that is usually the first puzzle piece that I like to tackle. And what I mean by that is this, you know, when I was um, in my own, you know, uh, conundrum, right, five, six years ago, going through this feeling of unmotivation, uh, you know, this low energy, depressive feeling when I was overworked and burnt out, um, the next thing I was supposed to do was not to go and find what I'm passionate about to create a business for, because that was sort of too, too big of a leap in a lot of ways. 
And I tried doing that for many, many months that with no avail, right? And I think in hindsight, what I would have loved to have told myself at that time is actually stop putting that pressure of finding that passionate business idea or, or passion work that you want to do, but instead actually allow yourself to instill other ways of passion in your life. And that could be hobbies, things that I've left um, dormant in my life, right? Could be my health, could be my hobbies, could be my interests that have nothing to do with earning a living, but everything to do with things that spark creativity, that can spark um, deep interest, right? And actually cultivating that in my life, having more time for that. Because I think that when we are surrounded by things that are um, things that we find interesting or fun or creative, uh, this can actually help us to um, create that environment, right? That allows passion to enter into our lives and sparks ideas for things like business ideas, right? Or um, passionate career ideas that we want to pursue. But if we are living a life where we're just going to work, we're doing this routine, this sort of mundane lifestyle choices that we make, right? We're ne uh, neglecting our health. We're neglecting spending time with friends and family that we love or neglecting hobbies that don't really lead to making money, but actually just something we enjoy. We really take ourselves away from the energy of passion. Uh, and I really say, uh, think that that's so important to start with when you're feeling you know, not passionate, not joyful, not energized to start a business, to start whatever it is that you think you want to do. Stop thinking about the business idea and start actually thinking about how can I do more things and have more experiences that I can reserve time for on a daily and weekly basis, right? Uh, that can allow me to just feel the joy of creativity and doing something new again, right, Mark? And that's something that I would suggest for you to do. Think about what has been in the past that have brought you some passion or joy, what have you done in the past? It could be hiking. It could be like when you attended, um, you know, a play or you did dumb dance classes that like you just sort of wanted to learn a new skill. And that was the time that you felt passion or maybe it's conversations you used to have that you stopped having or people you used to see, right? Or events that you used to attend, right? That isn't, um, again, anything to do with business stuff or career, but everything to do with that spark that you've been missing in your life so far. And sometimes a lot of times it's actually getting your health and fitness back into gear again. I found that when I didn't prioritize um, going to the gym or yoga or all the things that I used to enjoy because I pressured myself, uh, you know, in, in just working, 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 I, I, there was no space to be able to allow joy and creativity and passion to enter my life. So that's sort of the first piece of advice that I'll give. How can you actually have make time and prioritize things that actually are fun and creative and passionate, right? Or don't even use the word passion. What do you have some deep interests on that can allow the clues of what could, you could be passionate about to emerge, right? But find that time to go back into hobbies, activities, things that really just bring you joy, right? Because that's where it's going to spark when you actually have energy and time and space for it. Um, the second thing is, as you give yourself some time, you have a bit of room to think about, you know, what sparks joy and creativity in your life. You can then think a little bit about what you're drawn to, right? If you're thinking about business ideas, Mark, uh, or what work can I do that's really meaningful, really just think about what are uh, topics, right, and subjects that you seem to be talking a lot about in the dinner table with your friends. Uh, think about some some, you know, movements in the world, some causes and issues and problems uh, that, you seem to be reading a lot about, you seem to be drawn to, uh, and what makes you feel drawn to them. Um, a lot of times when we think about meaningful work, you know, it's not just about skill sets that we bring to the table, but really we can feel ourselves contributing to this cause, right? Contributing to a movement. You know, Pam Slim, one of my coaches, uh, I love the way she says this, is like, you know, meaningful work and purpose really comes from, you know, these subjects that you go, I, I'm prepared to lay my body on the road for. Like, you know, you might say to yourself, not on my watch, right? Not during the time that I'm alive. What are some issues and causes that are happening in the world uh, that you really could, could deploy some of your skill sets towards, right? And just like I was sort of giving that advice to Jessica around, you know, you really don't know what you can be passionate to solve in your work or business until you give it a trial to really give yourself that mini internship without any pressure right, on making money on, but actually just start to exercise the muscle of giving, right, exercise the muscle of 
being of service to people, finding people in your community to help, and then find more of them to be able to be um, sharing your gifts, sharing your message, sharing your ways of problem solving, whatever those things are going to be for you. Um, don't feel so pressured about starting a business, but really re retell yourself the question of what it is that I can do that I think can be really helpful to people and questions that I'm already potentially being asked about. And what do I feel most curious, right, to help people with that seems to be in my vicinity, in my world these days? It may not be part of my resume, may not even be something I've been ever paid to do, but I seem to be really called to do it, right? And that could potentially be something that are topics that you might be passionate to focus on. Uh, but in the beginning, Mark, just like I said, if you don't feel passion in your life, nothing is sparking for you when you think of the word passion, uh, stop thinking about business because it's just too big of a question. Start thinking about how can I involve more things that can inspire me, that can motivate me, uh, that can energize some of my creative ideas. And sometimes that's nothing to do with business and everything to do right, with um, small activities, small things to remember that you have stopped doing that have used to bring you joy, right? Creating the environment for passion to come to the door is really important because it's not just, it's not, passion's not one of those things that just like you wake up and you have a Gandhi moment and all of a sudden you know your purpose in life. It doesn't work that way, right? We have to actually be inviting things that feel passionate. Like it could be small things like every day when you talk to a stranger, when you're in work, when you're talking to your best friend, like how can you make this experience full of joy and creativity and passion? How can you be present to things, right? How can you actually stop hustling and just moving in this routine, right, that, that you've created and actually start to walk a different way at life, right? How can you actually take a different route to work? How can you um, sort of disrupt your routines every day and do something different? Just introducing one thing different a day or one thing even different a week can really help to align you back to remembering the things that bring brought you creativity and joy. And that is a really great way to open up um, your environment, right? To invite some things that could be um, creative and passionate for you to pursue. Now, if any of you guys are listening and have anything to chime in on how you may have found your passion or found a focus that you're passionate about, right? Or deep interest. I like to, to think about passion being deep interest things that are you're curious about, you're interested to do more of, you inviting into your life. Um, if you guys have found, um, you know, ways of doing work or ideas that sparked you um, when you have had this question that Mark's asking, what have you done? you know, to be able to get there? And what have you um, prepared in your life to welcome passion and to welcome joy and creativity in your life? And what may you have to stop doing potentially to also create room to allow creativity, passion, and joy to really enter your life? I would love for you to share in the comments. So thank you so much for these questions, Mark and Jessica, and for everyone that's listening to our Q&A today. Um, it's my favorite thing to do every month. You know, our, we do our trainings here uh, every month as well, but the questions are always so deep. It's always so specific that it really allows me to um, give some advice that I uh, can think about, right? That I've helped other people with similar questions, uh, but it is a collaborative place here. So um, every time you guys prompt a question or ask a question, we always utilize a lot of your questions to our video blogs, what we teach in our webinars, um, what is our next Q&A topic, right? So if you have a big question or any of these questions today sparked something that you really want to learn, something that you uh, would love for me to shine a light on or give fresh perspective on, please let us know in the comments below and your question could be featured in our next Q&A session. Thanks so much for joining me and have a great start to your week or actually midweek actually now for you. Um, and I would uh, love be having you a part of the community and I hope to see you next in our next Q&A session as well. Have a great uh, day, night, or wherever you are, and thanks for joining me. Bye.